Russia needed two spacecraft, Soyuz for crew, Progress for cargo. SpaceX built one, Dragon. After an explosion destroyed Russia's only ISS launch pad last month, grounding both vehicles for potentially two years, Dragon stepped in to do both jobs simultaneously. How did Elon Musk engineer a single spacecraft so capable it can replace Russia's entire space station access infrastructure? On November 27, 2025, Launch Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome suffered catastrophic damage. This wasn't just any launch pad. It was the only facility capable of sending both Soyuz crew vehicles and Progress cargo ships to the ISS. Within hours, Russia's entire space station access infrastructure went offline. Initially, Roscosmos projected confidence. Deputy Director Dmitry Baranov announced that replacement components were ready, repairs would begin December 1st, and the pad could be operational by late February 2026. But nearly a month later, there's been radio silence. No progress updates, no photos of reconstruction, no revised timelines. Industry experts now believe the disruption could extend to two years, possibly longer. Here's why that's catastrophic. Russia didn't build redundancy into their ISS program. They operated two specialized systems. Soyuz for transporting cosmonauts, Progress for delivering cargo and fuel. Both launch from the same pad. Both are now grounded. For potentially two years, Russia cannot rotate crews, deliver supplies, or provide propellant for orbital reboosts. Their entire ISS operation just became dependent on someone else's hardware. So who steps in when the world's second space power goes offline? NASA didn't wait for Russia to ask for help. They moved preemptively. Two SpaceX cargo Dragon missions were accelerated. CRS-34 shifted from June to May 2026. CRS-35 moved from November to August 2026. These aren't token gestures. They're comprehensive coverage for Russia's missing progress flights, compensating for delayed cargo deliveries and lost orbital reboost capability. Then came the Crew-12 announcement. Scheduled for February 2026, the mission includes Russian cosmonaut Andrei Fedyaev under the existing cross-flight agreement. That means Dragon will be handling both Russian crew rotation and Russian cargo resupply simultaneously. This is where Dragon's engineering philosophy reveals itself. SpaceX didn't build two separate spacecraft. They built one highly adaptable platform with two configurations. Cargo Dragon and Crew Dragon share the same core structure, the same Falcon 9 integration, the same autonomous docking system, the same fundamental design. The difference is internal configuration and life support systems. That design choice made over a decade ago just became strategically invaluable. Dragon can switch roles based on mission requirements. Need cargo? Load the pressurized section with supplies and equipment. Need crew? Install seats, environmental controls, and windows. The trunk section remains flexible for both configurations, carrying unpressurized cargo, fuel, or additional hardware. Compare that to Russia's approach. Soyuz carries three people maximum with minimal cargo capacity. Progress carries cargo but no crew, two vehicles, two launch campaigns, two separate supply chains. When one system fails, the other can't compensate. But here's the part that makes Dragon genuinely revolutionary. Reusability. Russia's vehicles are expendable, burned up on re-entry or deorbited into the ocean. Every mission requires a brand new spacecraft. Dragon capsules fly multiple times. The same vehicle that delivered crew in 2023 might carry cargo in 2024 and fly another crew mission in 2025. 
That's not just cost efficiency, it's operational flexibility that Russia simply cannot match with their current technology. So how did SpaceX achieve this when NASA, with decades of spaceflight experience, never built anything quite like it? The irony here runs deep. Eleven years ago, NASA was completely at Russia's mercy. When the space shuttle retired in 2011, America lost independent access to the ISS. Every astronaut flew on Soyuz. Russia set the prices, Russia controlled the schedule, Russia had all the leverage, and they used it. Soyuz seat prices climbed from around $20 million per astronaut to $70 million by 2020. NASA had no choice but to pay. When tensions escalated after Crimea's annexation in 2014, Russian official Dmitry Rogozin mocked America publicly, suggesting they use a trampoline to reach the ISS instead of relying on Russian rockets. At that exact moment, SpaceX was quietly developing Dragon under NASA's commercial crew program. Elon Musk's response to the trampoline comment was measured but pointed. Sounds like this might be a good time to unveil the new Dragon Mech 2 spacecraft. No trampoline needed. Back then, it sounded like wishful thinking. Russia had been launching humans to space since 1961. SpaceX had never flown a person, but Musk understood something fundamental. The country that controls access to space holds geopolitical leverage. Breaking Russia's monopoly wasn't just about saving money, it was about restoring American strategic autonomy. Six years later, on May 30th, 2020, SpaceX launched Demo-2 with NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley. Dragon docked to the ISS flawlessly. America regained independent crew access for the first time in nine years. At the post-flight press conference, Musk smiled and said simply, The trampoline is working. The comment went viral instantly, but most people missed the deeper achievement. SpaceX hadn't just matched Soyuz's capability, they'd exceeded it. Dragon carried more crew, offered more interior volume, provided abort capability throughout the entire flight profile, and could be reused. Russia's newest Soyuz variant, by comparison, was an incremental update to a design from the 1960s. Then, in 2022, after Russia invaded Ukraine and faced Western sanctions, Rogozin announced Russia would stop selling RD-180 and RD-181 rocket engines to the United States. He appeared on state television and declared, let them fly on something else, on broomsticks for all I care. Musk's response was even simpler this time. He posted a Falcon 9 launch video with the caption, American Broomstick. Because SpaceX's Merlin engines were entirely American-made, Russia's engine cutoff affected legacy programs like Atlas V, but not SpaceX, not Falcon 9, not Dragon. So if Dragon made America independent, why is NASA now using it to help Russia? This is where engineering intersects with geopolitics in unexpected ways. The ISS is a $150 billion orbital laboratory, but it was deliberately designed so no single country could operate it alone. That wasn't a weakness, it was a feature, meant to ensure long-term international cooperation. Russia controls the propulsion segment. Their modules provide the thrusters that reboost the station's orbit, maneuver away from space debris, and maintain attitude control. Without those systems, the ISS gradually loses altitude and eventually deorbits uncontrolled. The United States and its partners control power generation and life support. The massive solar arrays are American-built. The oxygen generation systems, water recycling and carbon dioxide scrubbing are primarily American technology. Without those systems, the crew can't breathe, drink or survive. This creates mutual dependency that transcends political tensions. When Colombia disintegrated during re-entry in 2003, 
NASA grounded the shuttle fleet for over two years. During that period, Russia maintained ISS operations, delivered supplies, and kept the station alive. That redundancy prevented abandonment of the entire program. The cross-flight agreement between NASA and Roscosmos operates on the same principle. If one partner's transportation system fails, the other provides backup. It's not charity, it's insurance. When Russia's launch pad was destroyed, NASA activated that insurance policy. Here's what makes Dragon particularly valuable in this context. It can deliver cargo to both the American and Russian segments. Progress vehicles typically carry fuel, food, and equipment specifically for Russian modules. Cargo Dragon's pressurized section can be loaded with supplies for any part of the station. That flexibility allows NASA to compensate for missing progress flights without requiring Russia to redesign their logistics entirely. But there's a limit to what Dragon can do. It cannot replace the propulsion functions that Russian modules provide. Dragon can dock to the ISS, deliver cargo, rotate crew, but it cannot reboost the station's orbit in the same way progress vehicles do. NASA has added some reboost capability to Cargo Dragon's trunk section, but it's supplemental, not primary. This means cooperation remains essential. Dragon fills the gaps Russia cannot cover right now, but the station still needs Russian propulsion systems functioning. That's why 130 workers are reportedly on round-the-clock shifts at Baikonur, working to repair Launch Site 31. Could Dragon eventually handle everything if Russia left the ISS entirely? Theoretically, yes. NASA and SPACEX could develop enhanced propulsion modules, retrain astronauts to operate Russian systems, and maintain the ISS without Roscosmos involvement. But practically, that would require years of preparation, billions in additional funding, and acceptance of higher operational risk during the transition. Russia knows this, which is why they're not rushing toward an early ISS exit despite the current crisis. Their next generation station, the Russian Orbital Service Station, was announced in 2022 with an optimistic launch date of 2027 for the first module. That timeline has already slipped. Industry analysts now expect 2028 at the earliest for initial components with full operational capability pushed into the early 2030s. Moreover, Ross remains largely conceptual. Budget constraints have slowed development and technical challenges around new modules, propulsion systems, and life support haven't been fully resolved. If Russia abandons the ISS too soon, they'll face a gap of several years with no operational space station experience. That gap would be devastating. Cosmonauts need continuous training in long-duration spaceflight. Engineers need real-world data from operational systems. Mission controllers need daily practice managing complex orbital operations. Lose those capabilities for even three years, and Russia risks falling permanently behind. Meanwhile, China's Tiangong space station is already operational, permanently crewed, and expanding. If Russia exits the ISS prematurely and stumbles on Ross development, they'll find themselves in third place behind both America and China in human spaceflight capability. Dragon's evolution continues as well. SpaceX is developing enhanced life support duration, increased cargo capacity, and potentially propulsion upgrades that could provide more robust reboost capability. Each improvement makes Dragon more self-sufficient and reduces dependence on Russian systems. The technological gap is widening. Dragon represents modern aerospace engineering, reusable, flexible, upgradable, cost-effective. Soyuz and Progress represent Cold War-era design, reliable but rigid, proven but expensive, functional but limited. Russia's repair efforts at Baikonur tell the real story. They're not abandoning Soyuz and Progress. 
they're desperately trying to restore them, because without those vehicles, Russia loses its independent access to space. And depending entirely on American hardware, after decades of being the provider rather than the customer, represents a strategic reversal Russia never anticipated. The engineering lesson here extends beyond spacecraft design. Dragon succeeded because SpaceX built adaptability into the core architecture from day one. They anticipated that mission requirements would change, that political relationships would shift, and that operational flexibility would become strategically valuable. Russia built specialization, one vehicle for crew, one for cargo, both launching from one location. That approach worked for decades until a single point of failure took down the entire system. In 2014, when Dmitry Rogozin told America to use a trampoline, Russia held all the cards. They had the only ride to the ISS. They set the prices. They controlled access. Elon Musk's response wasn't an argument. It was a blueprint. He built Dragon not just to match Russian capability, but to exceed it through smarter engineering. Russia designed two specialized vehicles for two separate jobs. SpaceX engineered one adaptable platform that does both jobs better. That's not just clever design, that's strategic foresight. When Baikonur's launch pad exploded last month, that engineering philosophy became Russia's lifeline. Dragon now carries Russian cosmonauts, delivers their cargo, and keeps their ISS segment operational. The spacecraft that ended American dependence on Russia has become essential to Russia's continued presence in orbit. The reversal is complete, not through political maneuvering, but through superior engineering. The lesson extends beyond spaceflight. Versatility defeats specialization when circumstances change. Reusability beats expendability in the long run, and building redundancy into your architecture protects you when single points of failure collapse. Russia is working frantically to repair their launch pad because they understand what this crisis revealed. Depending on someone else's technology, especially after decades of being the provider, is a position no major space power wants to occupy. The trampoline worked and now it's carrying everyone. If this analysis gave you new perspective on how engineering shapes geopolitics, hit that like button and subscribe to New Space Review for more deep dives into space industry developments. What do you think Russia's next move should be? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.